Hello, everyone, and welcome to INS Year One. Welcome, everyone, to the MYP system. And I'd like to start by stating, as we gather here today to understand the first unit, I want you to keep in mind that you are all stepping into a realm of knowledge, curiosity, and discovery. Over the next seven weeks, we will delve deep into the intricacies of global and global into global interactions and global problems that are evident around the world, unraveling its mysteries and uncovering connections that will expand our understanding far beyond the boundaries of the textbook itself, where we will provide solutions that are considered smart based on smart objectives, which highlight the following specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time specific. To begin with, I would like to start by introducing our title of the unit. The title of the unit is, what does it mean to be a global citizen? So I want you to keep this question in mind because a global citizen is, our, uh, is your aim and it should be your primary focus to become a global citizen. And in order to do so, you need to understand the term itself, which will be reflected throughout the entire unit. You should be able to define the term global citizen by the end of the seven week period. Now, the key concept, related concepts, and global context are essential to understand because it highlights how our unit is built up and it reflects on the statement of inquiry, which I will discuss in a bit. But for now, the key concept is global interaction. So around the globe, how can we solve these issues? What are the issues that will be discussed throughout the unit? The issues will include the following, pollution, deforestation, human rights will be discussed briefly, and finally, recycling and sustainability. The related concepts include power and choice, power in terms of how you convey the message, and this will be explained later on in terms of your investigation process, and your choice for a particular solution based on the smart of objectives that were discussed prior. The global context includes the following, globalization and sustainability, and the exploration as human impact on the environment. So when you look at the key concept, related concepts and global context, you can deduce what the unit is primarily about. So obviously we will discuss issues that are occurring around the world that are related to the ecosystem, the environment and social factors that are impacting our sustainability. And we will highlight how humans are the ones that are imposing this threat. Moreover, as learners, you will deduce possible solutions to reduce the impact. When you add the key concept related concepts and global context, you will create a statement of inquiry. Now the statement of inquiry plays a crucial role in guiding you learners and us teachers through the inquiry-based learning, okay? It encourages interdisciplinary thinking, critical thinking, and connections between different subject areas and real-world contexts. So as you can tell, the unit itself is related to a real-life problem, and you can connect it to other disciplines. You might tell me, oh, well, pollution is probably related more to science than it is in I and S. However, our concept of this unit is to integrate more than one discipline. When I say discipline, it reflects your subject groups. What subjects are you taking in the MYP program? Uh, through the exploration of the SOI, you will develop a deeper understanding of the concepts and their applications, fostering a holistic approach to learning. Now, this will build up throughout and I want you always to keep in mind, whether in I and S or any other discipline, the statement of inquiry is very important as it reflects what the assessment will be about. So I will not bring a statement of inquiry that is not related to uh, global interactions or power and choice, or even the impact of humans, all right? So it will be added all together it's like an equation that creates the same of inquiry reflectors to the unit, which is global problems 
are a rea reality, but individuals have the power and choice to make a positive difference. So when you look at a statement of inquiry, you need to deduce that pollution, recycling, sustainability, um, human, um, human rights are all global issues that are occurring all around the world. And we individuals have the power to change this. Now, what or how can we change this will be reflected into your for sure. Now, the inquiry-based questions are divided into the following. We have factual questions, conceptual questions, and debatable questions. Obviously, we're going to start with the factual and build up to the debatable because you cannot start debating something where you do not have sufficient knowledge to. So we begin with the factual, which includes the following. What is the definition of a global citizen or citizenship? Uh, what are some examples of global issues that individuals can address as global citizens? Could be war, could be health. There are many aspects to it. I just touched upon a few. What are the key components of sustainability in the context of global citizenship? So here you can tell that the factual questions are almost all what. It start, they start with the WH question what, which indicates that you will just briefly identify them and not discuss them in depth. So this, this relates or this reflects that you need to have detailed information or knowledge and understanding of the unit itself from the context itself, which is your individual and society's book by concept year one. The conceptual include the following. In what ways do the concepts of global citizenship challenge traditional notions of national identity? And how can an understanding of global interaction help us address social justice issues and identity of on a global scale? So as you can see, the conceptual are a little bit more in details. They, in other words, they somewhat ask you to reflect not only on your knowledge and understanding, but to elaborate based on your perspective and understanding of the unit. And finally, the debatable, to what extent should multinational corporations play in promoting global citizenships and sustainability? So obviously we're going to discuss multinational corporations, perhaps the UN, and uh, identify how they can play a, a primary role in promoting global citizenship and sustainability in order to provide a future and healthy future for those that are coming next or in the next generation. Now, after understanding the factual, conceptual, and debatable question, the debatable question will be debated within inside of the class, as I'd like you all to learn how not only to reflect your perspective, but also and also respect other people when they're reflecting their own perspective and opinion, because it illustrates your ability to be open-minded in the sense that you can accept new ideas and perspectives. Now, after we discuss the uh, inquiry-based questions, you shall perform a, um, a task where you will create a brochure. Now, how you're going to create the brochure and what is required of you will be discussed later on. However, I'll touch upon briefly what each and every criterion includes. For this unit, you'll only be assessed on criterion B and C. You may refer back to my main page, uh, my message, in terms of all the criteria that are evident in uh, I and S. And in this, in this discipline, uh, B stands for investigating. And you'll be assessed on the following strands. You will formulate and choose a clear and focused research question explaining its relevance. So when you create a research question as a title for your brochure, you must answer the research question at the end of your conclusion. Formulate and follow an action plan to investigate a research question. You will follow a detailed action plan of how you're going to create your brochure. Uh, this may include uh, your process of research, where did you get the information from, what resources did you use, uh, how did you start creating your brochure, did you use Microsoft Word, or, did, or do you prefer creating it by hand? The third strand includes use methods to collect and record relevant information. You will need to use uh, both primary and secondary resources. However, for the first unit, I shall be a little bit lenient in terms of using primary resources, and I will allow you to use more of secondary resources, and we will discuss the difference between primary and secondary resources in depth. 
Um, the final strand is to evaluate the process and results of in, of the investigation with guidance. Um, and for this strand, I will provide a set of questions and it depends on your answer where it will land you. So for instance, if you answer briefly with one to two lines and you're not reflecting the um, vision of the school and the purpose of this unit in terms of the SOI statement, uh, and then you did not properly answer and reflect effectively for the strand. And in terms of how to answer the guided questions, it will be reflected later on when we start with the formative assessments, which is done prior to the summative assessment. As a reminder, the formative assessment is not marked. It only tells you where you stand so that when you do the formative assessment, you are aware of the criterion and how you're going to be assessed. Criterion C, on the other hand, is known as communicating. And it, ha it has to do with how you're going to communicate your idea. And you it includes the following strands. To begin with, the first strand indicates your ability to communicate information and ideas in a way that is appropriate for the audience and purpose. So when you create a brochure, you must understand who your target audience is and what is your role. And in, or in order to do to be effective in terms of how you present it, you should ensure that the language is appropriate and that the audience is aware of your intention for creating this for sure. The second strand includes the following, structure information and ideas according to the task instructions. Again, you'll receive a detailed instruction in terms of how to create the brochure and what is required from you in each and every page. In the first page, you'll have to write an introduction. The second page is a cause and effect, impact, solution, and a case study where you're reflecting a country. The final page would be the resources that you've used and contact information, because again, you're creating a brochure. Not only are you you're going to create a brochure, you shall also create a QR code with the aim to inform not only your grade level, but all the schools or your, the MYP from grade six to eight about this issue in a sense that you're promoting uh, different students to take part in your vision and mission to have a sustainable future. And finally, the last strand, create a reference list and cite sources of information. If you've noticed, I've mentioned prior that the last page will include the resources. And because you're including resources, that means you need to use the internet to research some solutions and the effect of these solutions. And probably you're going to, you must research a case study apart from the ones that are evident in the book. So when you cite your resources, you will cite in the form of MLA 9. Uh, do not worry if you're not common with a citation process. You will have a session that explains in details how to cite and what is required from you in the citation process. All in all, I wish you best of luck. This is the beginning of your MYP experience. And if you have any further questions, I shall always be here to answer you. Good luck, and I can't wait for a lovely and prosperous year.